Hey there. I never say like, comment, subscribe for a few reasons. One, I never am going to be a YouTuber per se. Two, if somebody likes a video, they're going to hit like if they remember. And as far as comments go, somebody wants to leave a comment, feel free. If not, that's cool too. Anyway, I am going to add on the videos telling you the story of COVID. Because yes, we got COVID. We're good now, but we weren't for a minute there. Good night. Okay, hello. I'm starting this video very late and I uh, will not likely finish this tonight. But um, just sort of a reality check on life status, the world as it stands right now. But um, I've seen very few real videos where somebody has had a family member with COVID in their home um, <clears throat> and talked about the details about how different it is for each person. But my 12 year old was diagnosed with COVID and I have the health department, um, whatever it is, screen thing. They have you download an app and all that at this point. I don't know if they were doing this months ago or if this is just a recent thing. But um, the strangest thing to me was we were out working on my mother's camper and it had been closed up for some time because we had all the issues with uh, my stepdad having the heart attack and going through physical therapy and all that. So she was not around for quite some time. It's moldy inside now. And to me, it's a very strong smell. My mother says she can't smell it, but she's in her 70s, so who knows. Um, other times she'll say that mold drives her crazy and she's allergic to it. So who actually knows? But he has always been able to smell it. And that particular Sunday, he couldn't smell it. And he came to me, I was uh, working on jacking up the camper because it's kind of tilted, you know, like sideways. So I was trying to get it straight, trying to get it level. And he said, I can't smell the camper. So I got out from under the camper and walked around and I said, well, I can smell it. I said, who knows, maybe, you know, it's just a thing. Um, later that day, there were a couple brief instances where I wasn't really paying too much mind because thinking back on it a few days after, you know, this incident, he didn't have any other symptoms. He didn't have a cough. He wasn't acting sick. Um, he had a runny nose for about three days before that Sunday. But uh, the point is, that was a Sunday. So then I kept him home from school that Monday. And uh, Tuesday, I sort of tested him because my mother was saying, oh, he's making it up. He's lying. He can smell things because he could still taste. On Monday, he could still taste. Then Tuesday, he had some issues with tasting food. He was like, I don't think I can taste things anymore. Um, so that's when I was, I had been calling around health departments and everywhere else trying to find somewhere to get COVID testing. For whatever reason, I don't know if it was just because I had so much going on, but for whatever reason, I didn't think to call his pediatrician. You know, that was sort of like the last uh, call that I made. So Tuesday I called this pediatrician and they said, okay, bring him in tomorrow. We'll do the COVID testing. Uh, so I let him know. I said, by the way, tomorrow afternoon, we're going to go get you COVID tested. And, um, we brought him, we, you know, I had kept him home from school Monday and Tuesday, uh, Wednesday also kept him home, brought him in to get him tested. Now, he didn't develop any other symptoms. I was sort of waiting and watching, keeping an eye on his temperature, just sort of watching him. He did sleep a little more than usual, but at that age, they all seem to, you know, they're growing. <clears throat> um, he got the test on Wednesday. We got the results Friday. And uh, it was funny because I was walking through Home Depot and early, 
early in the morning and um, I had just, I think, dropped the other kids off at school. And they called me and they said, hi, he's positive for COVID. And for some reason, I heard he's not positive for COVID. And I said, oh, great. So he can go back to school. <laughs> and they said, um, no, he's positive. And I said, for some reason, I thought you said he's not positive. And I was a phlebotomist before I was a nurse. So I know that you wouldn't say they're not positive. You would say they're negative. But for whatever reason, I think my brain wanted to hear that he was negative. So it was willing to twist it anyway. But um, I did ask him a couple days ago if he minded uh, doing a short video, just sort of explaining his side of what COVID was to him. Uh, and he was a little iffy on it. So I'm just going to keep him out of it um, unless he decides to add his his insight but the long story short is he lost a sense of smell before that he had the runny nose for three days after losing his sense it, the runny nose went away when he lost his sense of smell. the runny nose went away that next day he lost a sense of smell at some point between the morning and three in the afternoon we don't know for sure but it, he started getting his sense of smell back, I want to say a week and a half in, and it was jarbled. So he would smell something and it would smell like something completely different. And he would come running in and say, I got my sense of smell back, but these chips smell like this medication. <laughs> okay, I guess we can consider that your sense of smell back, but it sort of was in and out. Um, anyway, he's still at home in quarantine. Uh, I have somehow evaded the true quarantine lockdown, but I've also been wearing a mask and staying away from people as much as possible, knowing that I'm living in the hot zone. I still have to work. I still have things to do, but I have been, uh, fortunate to have mostly outdoor jobs. I did, however, take a week off which is not a great thing considering Christmas is now less than 15 days away. Today's the, um, today's the 12th, I believe. If Thursday was the 10th and today is Saturday. Anyway, um, I might refilm this. This is horrible quality, but I just wanted to kind of get it on there. Um, also, the other kids in the family, I do all the driving to and from school, or was doing all the driving to and from school. My mom was afraid that I might have COVID because of being around my son. So she did the driving for a week, um, hoping to keep the other kids healthy. Although the youngest, the asthmatic, she was born premature. So she, um, she kind of gets sick with everything and has been, she was sneezing an awful lot Thanksgiving break, going into Thanksgiving break, just, I mean, sneeze, 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 sneeze. And the last few days, she's been pretty under the weather. Um, anyway, Monday, I'm bringing them all to get, um, what is it, antibody check to see if we can even know if any of them have been exposed and have the antibodies. But we'll see. We'll see how things are going. But yes, um, my kid got COVID and I lucked out. He lucked out and his symptoms were so mild that it almost seemed like nothing was happening. But if somebody cannot smell dog poop, you don't that's not a normal thing. Everybody knows dog poop is one of those smells that you just, you want to get away from it. You don't want to be anywhere around it. And, uh, yeah, it was a good reality check. Uh, things happen. And right now, yeah, the numbers are going up, but the kids had said, oh yeah, three kids in my class had it and blah, 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 blah. That's been going on all school year. Like, as in starting an August school year. 
I spoke to the nurse. There are two confirmed COVID cases at the school. My son is one of them. Meaning, people are not getting their kids tested because I know they're keeping kids out. And the other child that had COVID was, drum roll please, a good friend of my older son. So, are they linked? I'm going to go with yes. For whatever reason, I've been having some trouble collecting my thoughts to get the video that I'm trying to film filmed, edited, and published. I have several videos and there's probably a clip where I'm chit-chatting about that that I've worked on quite a bit but my 12 year old being diagnosed diagnosed with COVID wasn't the end of the story so he got it we did the mandatory two week uh, which actually became two okay so he got tested Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday he got tested three days after he lost his sense of smell because we couldn't find somewhere. Dash lights, dash lights. We couldn't find somewhere to do the test. The only place that was recommended to me was the health department because with everything going on, it didn't occur to me to go to his pediatrician, like brain cells, they're, they're either overloaded or dying off. Anyway, the health department could only do the test on Thursday when I called them on Monday. And I thought, well, that would work except for two things. That would push back the amount of time that it takes to get an answer, thus pushing back the amount of time we have to wait for him to go back to school because they're not going by the symptom date, they're going by the testing date. So, also, I had to go out of town Thursday. I was not gonna be around. I would not be able to bring him to get testing done. It was one of those drive up testing deals. So it occurs to me to call his pediatrician, which was late on Tuesday. I'm not sure why it took me so long to mentally get there. I know I was I was working, I was doing other things. Because bear in mind, I'm not believing at this point that this child has COVID. I spent the entirety of lockdown working. And most of that, the boys had to come with me because they weren't in school. Um, you know, they're, they're doing all their stuff online. So I bring a couple of laptops and hook them up to my hotspot or whatever. But I more or less wanted to keep an eye on them because if I left them at home and I'm working an hour away and a fight breaks out, which happens daily if you keep those two in a house, I I can't get back, you know, fast enough. Or you know, I can yell at them through a camera, but that's about it. They don't care. They, honest to God, the camera starts talking to them. They don't care. Anyway, so we get his testing done at the pediatrician. Symptoms start Sunday. Pediatrician testing Wednesday. Friday morning, I get a phone call, which I feel like I said this already and I might have. They, I was in Home Depot and it was early. It was early in the morning. Well, I dropped off the kids at school, so it was past 7.30. Anyway, the phone rings and they said, oh, hi. I heard Zach is not positive for COVID, which isn't how you say it. You would say he's negative, but I think I badly wanted to hear that he didn't have COVID because I, I'm going to be honest, I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go through it. I didn't know what that would mean for us. I, you know, I'm the sole supporter of my family. If, if I get put on lockdown for any reason, like, luckily, my job allowed me to be one of the few people 
to roam freely. And and actually, so there was a guy doing drywall at the same house. And one day, as I'm on my way, I'm on the highway driving, I get a phone call from the homeowner. And she said, oh, my drywall guy just called and said he got pulled over and turned around by a state trooper because of the lockdown. And I thought, oh shit, what if I get turned around? I didn't know that we were allowed to continue working on people's homes. And so long as we're being safe, we're not being morons about it. Um, I didn't know that yet. So I started, I had one of my kids with me. I had him start, um, you know, he would basically hit the microphone and I would tell the search to do whatever. So then he would read to me whatever was going on, but it was getting confusing because the questions in my head weren't fully formed, I guess. It was like, well, what do I ask to get to the answer? Because there really wasn't much available. This is back in like, I don't know, March and April, somewhere in there. I, I feel like it was in April by then uh, because the drywaller should have been done. He should have been done. There's no reason this guy should have still been there messing with this same hall bathroom, but he was. Anyway, he said he got turned around um, and I told her, okay, well, I'll let you know if I make it to the house. That's, that's it. I said, I'm gonna keep on driving. I'm already on my way. I'm not gonna turn around unless somebody tells me to. Although I did greatly enjoy that the highways were pretty sparse. The guy was a bullshitter. Just, that's the whole point of that story. The guy lied. He didn't get turned around. He just didn't feel like going. Whatever. Maybe he had other work to do. He lives in an area where there is a lot of work. I don't understand why he was driving to Gainesville when he lived in, maybe he has such a bad name in his community that he can't get work. I have no idea. I was driving a long distance because there is not a lot of work where I live. I have to drive to Gainesville often uh, for work, which, you know, it's a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, and that job was booked before COVID was a thing here. Like, it was when it was still in the secret. Somebody just honked at me. I guess. I don't know. Maybe my Rudolph nose is coming off my truck. I'm going to pull over and investigate. I get way too paranoid about vehicle related things. Let me check tire pressure. We're good on that. I don't know. I don't know why you would have honked at me. Anyway, fast forward, kids go back to school in the August sometime. Everything's fine, cruising along. We're hearing rumors here and there about, oh, this, this kid has COVID, now this teacher has COVID. There actually was a teacher with COVID. The one teacher that was still wearing a mask and it was Thanksgiving break or I can't remember if it was Thanksgiving break or October break. They get ran, They get these really weird breaks. It's not block scheduling. It's not like a year-round school. But they get these randomly weird breaks. Just like, oh, hey, they have a week off suddenly in October. And it's like, fine. Okay. So a teacher ended up with COVID. Turned out the teacher hadn't been around any students for several days by the time he got COVID. But it's the only one that was wearing a mask and had every student in the class wear a mask. So people weren't kind of like panicking about it. They were like, well, that was actually the one who's wearing masks and enforcing masks and this, that, and the other. Now we get to the end of November and my kids got a runny nose, which who cares, right? I had a runny nose, we all had a runny nose, everyone had a runny nose. Um, find somewhere to pull over but then he loses his sense of smell meanwhile in texas my sister was dying from covid she didn't die but she came damn close i did not find this out until a few days ago so my kid was out of school for all of thanksgiving break and then two and a half weeks 
which puts us on today. Today was the day he was supposed to go back. My mother did the morning driving, hooray. And he started vomiting on the way to school. So he came back home real quick and never made it to school this morning. But currently because of the COVID numbers, school is optional for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because Christmas break technically starts Monday, but it's actually when they get out of school Friday. So, I don't know if my child is going to make it back to school before Christmas break. So he may have a vacation from mid-November to January. I have no idea how far behind in the schoolwork. I have asked the school numerous times. Can I have his schoolwork so he can wait? He was bored to tears at home. I was buying him little puzzles and things to do, just something to keep him busy. He would, we, we live on 10 acres. He would go sit in the yard, just stare, stare at things because he, he didn't know what else to do. And I'm gonna come back to this. Actually, I'm gonna proof this video real quick and see if I'm making any sense. I guess we should call these driving with Rachel. Back in the car. Um, I was filming a video about how COVID struck my family and I dropped off of it quickly, um, sort of suddenly. I guess quickly is the wrong word. Anyhow, I ended up with COVID, but I had the more traditional, uh, you know, like lower oxygen saturation, horrible. I had a horrible headache for like three or four days and I did not lose my sense of smell or taste. They were just diminished and I had a headache. I felt like garbage and it was like a roller coaster. Like I, I was a nurse never seen anything like this like I used to think cancer was the strangest disease like it wins the weird award like you don't know who or when or what it just it happens and it takes the route it wants to take and treatment may or may not work no COVID COVID is gonna take the weird award cancer is gonna take the jerk award um, COVID is strange you'll feel like you're getting better and then the next day you're not you're not better you're getting worse now it's a pain meanwhile in texas turns out my sister uh had spent a few weeks in the hospital from covid and her whole family got it so i mean i feel like at this point everybody either knows somebody who's had it or has had it themselves so maybe the whole herd immunity thing will kick in. Maybe it won't. 